Welcome to 805 Focus. I'm Dr. Cinder Sinclair with Nonprofit Connect, and we will be bringing you the latest on your favorite nonprofits, so get ready to be inspired. Our special guest today is Joshua Weitzman, and Joshua is Executive Director of Alpha Resource Center. Welcome, Joshua. Thank you for having me. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. Gosh, I have admired Alpha Resource Center for so long. You folks do such important good work in the lives of people. And uh, so please tell us about what you're up to these days. Well, Senator, right now I think the biggest task that we're after is helping the community understand the mission of Alpha Resource Center. Most right. people in our community, when you hear Alpha, think of our thrift stores, which is fantastic. <laughs> oh, yes. The thrift stores support the mission, every purchase there helps make sure that we can support more families. That's so important. But at the root of it, it's individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities who are- Wait, say that again. In individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities. All right. Yeah, big words all by themselves. It <laughs> makes it hard to have the elevator pitch of, of what that is. So this is uh, autism, Down syndrome, cerebral palsy, and a host of other disabilities that are either extremely rare or even non-diagnosed. Oh. Yeah, and we support all the way from the birth of a child, meeting people at the hospital, that's how I got connected. Somebody from Alpha Resource Center met our family at the hospital when my oh. daughter who has Down syndrome was born. Oh gosh. Uh, all the way through end of life, both helping them access services available from the government through the schools, as well as providing uh, day supports for adults with developmental disabilities that are th currently three adult programs. That's amazing. They met, they met you at the hospital. Yes. It's our Lifespan Support Services team. So we, we have a Family Resource Center there. We have what we call a Family Empowerment Center, which helps with school supports. And recently we're working with First Five on Help Me Grow Santa Barbara County, which is a referral system to help make sure that doctors and schools and everyone have a place that they can go when they see that a child has a, a developmental delay. But they, they came to the hospital, they, they helped us navigate the differences, we, you know, it was child number three, we thought we knew what we were doing, but we found <laughs> out very quickly there were differences. Yeah. And uh, a mom with a little girl down in the room came and met us there, explained everything and started us on that path, helped us know we weren't alone and that there was a, a, a way to help Hannah really thrive. Wow. I bet you were surprised. We were. We, we, you know, we were the rare case that we weren't really concerned that Hannah had Down syndrome. Uh, which may have set us up for the surprise three days in when she wasn't eating well and we had oh. to get back to the hospital. Oh gosh. And then we learned like, no, we're gonna have to do things just a little bit differently. Hannah needs a different set of supports than her older sisters do. And that's what our team does. So we meet families wherever they are, whenever that diagnosis comes. We, we help them come down from what might be scary news uh -huh. and show them what the future can look like because it's oh. never as catastrophic as people first believe. There are people with developmental disabilities living amazing lives. Gosh, that, what a wonderful service. And so, um, so of course, doctors and teachers, yes. all these professionals, uh, you make sure they know about Alpha Resource. And so they, can, so they probably often refer people. Yeah, we get referrals from uh, doctors, from schools. We, we get parents who are just a little bit concerned reaching out to us. There's also the regional center system, which provides supports for all people with, with developmental disabilities throughout the state. So Tri-Counties Regional Center is the local regional center that serves Santa Barbara County. And uh, they will also refer families to us. We kind of connect and then actually bring them back into the regional center. It's an interesting relationship of kind of a yeah. reciprocal referrals uh -huh. and helping families get the support that they need. So. Uh, and then Help Me Grow will play a role in that as well, giving, giving us a single number that people can go to where we can kind of triage that. And also, and from that perspective, uh, work with other nonprofits in town, other family resource centers who may have different supports available to make sure that the person and the family is served completely, siblings, parents, everybody. Well, that's great. So you work together with a lot of different organizations and schools. Yes, we're very familiar with the school districts in town. Uh, you know, it, 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 gets, it gets more difficult for them every year. There are more and more children with diagnosis of autism and other disabilities. And, really? Yeah, and there's, there's a mandate to provide services. So IEPs, Individualized Education Plan is what that stands for uh -huh. in particular. 
is a legal document that outlines how a child will be uniquely or individually supported so that they can navigate the school system just like any other typically developing child. But it can be hard at times to get all of those things in place, to know what's needed, to work with the school districts to get that. So we come alongside, uh, we, we coach parents, we train parents. We want them to be the advocate really at the end yeah, of the day. Yeah. When it's needed, we'll, we'll go to a meeting with them to provide that extra support and maybe some uh, expert advice on, on how to move forward. But we, we do it in a very non-adversarial way. That's the key. We, we get a lot of people who will come to us and say, I'm looking for a lawyer. <laughs> like, hold, hold on, hold on, slow down. We're not trying to sue anybody. We're not trying to create problems. We're all on the same team. We all care about the child and what they need. And let's let's come together. Let's use some common language. That's a lot of times where, where things oh, get lost. Gosh. And, and and understand where we both are and come to that place where we can put together a plan that really helps that child succeed. So a lot of people come to you with high emotions one, on, for one reason or another. Yes, our, our Lifespan Support Services team deals with a lot of emotion. But, you know, sadness, surprise, anger, yeah. frustration. And, and then it carries over into the adult side as well. So uh, one of the biggest challenges right now in California overall, in, in particular in Santa Barbara County, is when children age out of the school system. Oh. Oh. So for somebody with a developmental disability, that's typically when they turn 22. Uh -huh. There's a transition program that they might go into. But then at that point, the school system disappears. You're back into the regional center system. And while there's an entitlement program in California, there aren't enough openings and day programs and enough supports available for everyone to access them. Oh gosh. And so that's one of the reasons we're looking every year to expand our programs. It's, it's why we've added uh, employment services. So this mm -hmm. allows us to job coach and help people who have the ability to work to spend some of their days doing that. Uh, we're working on a culinary arts program. That's really, wow. yeah, it's popular in the high schools. And, and if we can expand that, we can create more openings. Uh, Slingshot, our art studio over there on, on De La Vina. It, it's a, another just interest-based program is what we call them, where we look at the interest of the individuals involved. We help them learn the skills. We hire qualified artist, a qualified chef to really teach them in a way that they can oh, grow gosh. and learn. And the more spaces we can open, the more people we can make sure have a smooth transition, that they don't fall into two or three years sitting at home, yeah. watching TV, doing just not getting the support and the interactions that they need. Gosh, so it's really tailored to really to each individual, each situation. It is, yeah. From birth all the way through school, all the way through adult, everything focuses on who is this person? What do they like? What supports do they need? The, the idea is to offer individualized supports in a way that everybody is able to, oh. to uh, contribute and be part of our community in, in kind of a, a, an equal way or a, you know, share, share what they bring. Gosh, that is great. Well, okay, let me ask you this. So everybody knows about and loves the Alpha Thrift Stores. Yes, yes. and it's so great that the money that people spend there go to support your important work. Yes. That's really great. And I also know you have a beautiful facility. We do. And I, I'd love for you to tell us what goes on, <clears throat> on in that beautiful facility. Yeah. Where it's located, all that. Yeah, we're, we're on at 4501 <clears throat> Cathedral Oak. So it's, it's between the 154 and Turnpike, right as you dip. And, and most people don't notice us because the property is actually kind of <laughs> sunk down. So you see these green metal roofs and, and that's where our, our Cat Oaks Day Program is. That's our main pro day program that's been there the longest. So we have about 100 adults that will be there on any given day. They, they all show up on various buses and other vehicles. And then we have a fleet of about 15 vehicles that will take half of that group out in the morning and the afternoon into the community to be involved there. But on that campus, uh, it's all sorts of activities. It's skills, sometimes it's arts and crafts, sometimes it's just a Friday afternoon movie because we all need some yeah. time to slow down. We have a band that plays, uh, a performing arts team that does uh, theater performances and, and other activities. What, what's so uh, important about that space is it gives individuals an opportunity to interact with friends who are like them. Some, some oh, of our participants oh. have been there for 30, 40, 50 years. Wait. Some okay. of the some of your the people that yes, some of 30, the, 40 years. Yeah, they've been there. Some of them have been there a long time, and and so so it gives us this twofold mission. We we have 
we have longtime participants who who are thriving in, in our program, which mm -hmm. has kind of this generalized approach to it. And then we have younger participants who are coming out of the schools who are looking to live a life a little bit differently. That, that the school supports have changed so much and our society has changed so much that there's more integration, more opportunity, more early supports, which, uh. which helps people then develop and be more capable later in life. So we're changing to make sure that we're keeping up with the generations that are that are growing up right now to give them what they wow. need. And so we've, you know, we have people from 22 through 72 on our campus at any time. 22 doing different to activities. 72. <laughs> yeah. Wow, you really do it all. It, yeah, it's a lot. We, we also do a, a social recreational program. Mm. Uh, we, have, we have, well, Teen Extreme is the, the youth version of that, which where it all began. And so this meets on uh, a couple nights a week, mm -hmm. movies, different fun activities, uh -huh. games, an opportunity to socialize. It, you're supposed to age out of that at, at about 18 and move into other programs, but everybody loved it so much that we created what we call <laughs> Expo, which is the adult version of, <laughs> of these social programs. But again, it, it's, you know, isolation among the developmentally disabled community is, is a real problem. It's very easy to be to not have friends, not have others to interact with. Even coming through the school system, yeah. you might be in a special ed program, but there's just, uh, our society as good as we're doing doesn't quite understand how to accept people all the time who have a disability. So the opportunity to interact with people like themselves is just invaluable. So important. Yeah, friendships that have been there for a long time. And it's great to see, we, we have a lot of participants, in fact, when we say like, hey, you wanna go out and walk on the beach, like, oh, I want to stay here with my friends. Oh, golly. <laughs> so, so some people we have to actually kind of trick to getting out into the community to enjoy their <laughs> exercise and other yeah, things yeah. like that. But, but at the end of the day, that's what's great. We know we have an environment that's safe, that's comfortable, that's inviting, because you wouldn't come for 30 years and be excited every Monday if that weren't yeah, the case. that's right. And so Alpha Resource Center is a 501c3, yes. right? Nonprofit. And so I bet you might accept financial donations. We do, we love financial donations. We, we've got the, the donate page on our website. I knew it. We do various fundraisers throughout the year. What, what goes on there? So we, we do receive some funding from the state, but the state, <laughs> uh, it's kind of abysmal. It, it's based on sub, you know, sub uh, market wages. Oh. It, it really covers the bare minimum. We couldn't have vehicles. We couldn't do improvements to our facilities. We couldn't start new programs. In fact, that funding only comes after you've started a program. You oh. have to start it on oh your own. Gosh. And then you have to get it vendored before you can receive any funding. And then that funding typically only covers about two thirds of what you want to be doing. Yeah, so yeah. that's where the community comes in. The community, or those financial supporters are the ones that allow us to continue to grow, continue to expand, to innovate, to, yeah. to not just be stuck in a dark, damp, aging facility, yeah, yeah. but instead to have great new facilities, great places for our participants to be. That is great. So a person can go on the website and make a financial donation. They can find out all about all of the programs, I bet, on yes. there. And, uh, oh, that's great. Gee whiz. Well, you guys are doing such important work. I bet you might have a story or two to share with us. Yeah, I could share some stories. Well, I heard you tell some stories at the Women's Fund. Yes. And that was, you did a great job. Well, and they gave you some, some a, a wonderful donation for the doors and the, and air, the air conditioning. conditioning. Yeah, yeah. We, we, in fact, I, I can share that with the, the audience. We, we realized we had, had a problem. Temperatures were rising, as we all know. We, we <laughs> hear all about global warming and other things. Yeah. And our campus on the backside, over there off Foothill, you know, off Cathedral Oaks Road, heats up a little bit more than the front side of our town, as we all know when you cross. Oh, so, yeah. you know, we get to triple digits back there, and our participants don't necessarily handle the heat as well as the rest of us. Some of, some of the conditions, the medical conditions that exist, uh, cause temperature regulation to be a little off. So, oh, one of our oh. participants, uh, call him Martin, he was, he was struggling on one of those hot days. He utilizes a wheelchair. He had kind of slid down. He was uncomfortable. Mm. Oh. He was just not happy. We had multiple staff trying to help him. Everything from offering him a drink of water and cool rag for the back of his neck to checking his blood pressure to make sure that we didn't have a medical situation and helping him adjust in his chair. 
but we got him together and, and then it was trying to get him to a better place. He was actually sitting outside. It was kind of sunny. It was really hot, but we didn't have a great location to do that. Our, our program spaces don't have air conditioning. Oh. So we brought him into this little auxiliary room. Well, we had to convince him to go down there. He didn't want to spend there. It's half sports equipment and it doesn't have any outside windows and it's, oh, you're not really with everybody else in the activities, but he, he agreed to go back there. And so when, you know, when the Women's Fund reached out, we knew exactly what we needed. We needed oh. the ability to offer a cool space. Cause once again, people love being on our campus, but it's changed. We built those buildings in 93, the climate isn't the same. And now we need that ability to make a space comfortable and safe. The automated doors will allow everyone to move in and out, even those utilizing wheelchairs without the assistance of others, which is independence and yes, empowerment, yes, yes. which I is really that. where our mission is. We, I mean, that's, we try to empower individuals with developmental disabilities throughout the county, support their families, we create opportunities, we foster belonging, and, and it's really gonna play into helping us succeed in that way. That is so wonderful. So, um, I know we have a couple minutes left. Is yeah. there anything else you'd like the audience to know about Alpha Resource Center? You know, I think more than anything, we want the community to understand that they can come to us. So mm -hmm. if you've got a friend who just got a diagnosis for their child of autism or oh. something else, call us. We're, we're there to help, we're there to answer questions. We're always available. There's there's no cost to people coming to us. We, oh, we don't have any sliding scales. We don't have all of our services are absolutely free, and so uh, that's important to know yeah, too. English, Spanish. We've got a whole host of Spanish speakers on our team, oh. and and so we're available to help anyone and everyone who who's entering this world of developmental disability for the first time. That I I know personally, as I said, what how confusing and scary that can be, and so. Yeah. That's what we want people. When, when, when you hear Alpha, we still want you to think thrift store and go buy yeah, stuff sure. at the stores and support. <laughs> but we also want you to remember that we're a resource center and, and that we're available throughout the year. We're there to help with schools. We're there to help with Early Start. We're there to help as you're transitioning. We're here to help with adults. We're, we're here to help when parents are getting older and they're thinking, what's going to go on with my child who I've been, you know, the key caregiver for and help them transition to more independent living and other support. So yeah. from birth all the way through end of life, th that Alpha Resource Center is available. Oh, you just do such amazing work for so many people. Thank you so much yes. for coming on our show and telling us about it and for all of your good work. Well, thank you, Senator. We appreciate the opportunity. And thanks for joining us on 805 Focus and we'll see you next time.